All right, guys, so I have a very special person here today, Jay Ruane. I just met him at the National Trial Lawyers Summit in Miami, and what an impressive guy. I looked into his background. Actually, before the summit, I didn't tell you, I already looked into all the speakers, and I was very impressed by you. He grew his firm from two to 13 as of actually today, you hired your 13th attorney. 13th one started today. Wow. So from two to 13 attorneys, um, his story is amazing. You know, he went from making $26,000 a year as a public defender right out of school. And then he got the uh, entrepreneur bug and He's one of the few lawyers who actually take a very business-minded approach to running their law firm. I wanted to ask Jay, how did you go from two to 13 attorneys? And I know that's a tough, zoomed out, vague question, but I kind of wanted to break it into a step-by-step, -step, almost like chapters, like the first chapter of starting the law firm with two attorneys when it was just you and your dad was this. And then chapter two, here's the big problem you have to solve. Chapter three, Here's the big problem you have to solve. Okay, so that's pretty simple uh, to actually define for you. So when it started out, it was my father and myself, and we added one associate about uh, 10 years into our joint practice together, uh, who happened to be a family friend who was starting the practice of law. She didn't really know what she wanted to do. And really, along this time, our digital marketing had been growing. My father's practice before I joined it was very regional, focusing on two or three different courthouses within one county, because that's the way we had the system here set up in Connecticut. But when I joined it and took a, a focus on DUI defense, I started building a website that was focused sort of statewide, because the laws are you know the same statewide. And through that, we started getting calls in other parts of the state. And so obviously you can't be in two places at once. And our volume started growing and growing. And actually one of my main competitors now is somebody who is at the far end of the state who I just used to send all my overflow to just keep mm -hmm. going, just keep going, sending it all out to him. But in the meantime, our just our growth and our organic growth of our practice uh, because we were doubling down and investing more in our digital marketing, investing more in our content marketing, and investing more in our systems allowed us to sort of build slowly to a point where we reached critical mass very quickly in our secondary office, needed to hire a law student as an intern. That law student graduated. We needed a body to be out in court because you can't really be in two courts at once. One of the conflicts we have in our state in Connecticut is that all the courthouses start at 10 a.m. So if you have to be in three different courthouses, you need three different people to be there. And it just dovetailed and dovetailed, it just kept rolling. Um, so the point where we just needed to have more bodies and as the business grows, we need to hire more to have more people available. Now it's interesting, that was because the courthouses here were somewhat inefficient. Now they're getting more efficient with their own adaptation of uh, digital calendaring and the like, and being able to keep their own stats on what cases are going too long. So we're actually seeing that our lawyers are getting to be much more efficient in stacking their cases at the courthouses and the like. Uh, so I don't know if there's really a expansion in the criminal area, but over the last couple of years, we've started to get into more civil rights work as well. That's where we made our most recent hire. And that's sort of investing back in the business because we've got a very small caseload there, but that's going to continue to grow as we invest more resources into that. Yeah, right. Tons of questions popping up as you're talking. Okay. So I think a good, a good nugget for everyone would be when to focus on systems. Like when is systems the top priority? When is leads the top priority? When is intake the top priority? D, all of the above. <laughs> I, 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 I knew you were going to say that. Yeah. So, okay. Well, obviously the first thing you need to do is you, make, you need to make the phone ring, right? As the phone rings, uh, you know, you can't be a viable business if your phone isn't ringing. So you need to focus on lead gen, whether it's online or offline, you know, especially in the criminal practice, a significant portion of our, uh, of our business comes by way of referral. I'd say we're 50, 50 percent referral, 50 percent marketing. So obviously wow. day one, you want to focus on letting people know that you're out there and that you're available to, uh, to, to give them legal services. First step. So just to clarify, the first step is get the phone to ring. That is the top priority of someone at the one or two attorney mark. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You want the phone to ring because if nobody's hiring you, 
you'll quickly be out of business. You could be the best lawyer in the world, but if nobody knows about it and nobody hires you, you're going nowhere. But I Got think it. right on the heels of, of, of your lead gen, you can start developing systems. And the systems that I talk about are things that we're all doing as lawyers every day. You know, when you get a, a new case, there's motions that you have to file at the courthouse. There's your notice of appearance and the like. All those steps can be easily systemized so that you can send them out to either a virtual assistant or an in-house paralegal or legal assistant. So you should be thinking systems all along. And truly, you should be thinking systems in terms of your lead gen. So take a step back and look at where you're getting your clients from. If you're getting 90% of your clients from your direct relationships, figure out how you can amplify those relationships and get more. If you're getting you know, a good chunk of your business from bail bondsmen in one courthouse, make relationships with bail bondsmen in another courthouse so that you can then utilize that to grow your practice. You know, that, what, what, what really people tend to do is they latch onto either digital or something else and they try to ride that way. But the reality is, is there, that you need to take a step back every now and then, see where you're executing well and keep going on those levels, see where you're having problems with execution and fix those with systems. Interesting. So it, this goes back to what uh, we were talking about uh, at the event. If you commit to one thing and you master that one thing, regardless of the platform, it could be, you know, like I say, an inflatable flailing arm man, you know, at, at, at a, you know, a, a, on a street corner. If you commit to that, if you systemize that one method, it could work. So the cool thing you're saying there is don't neglect what's already working. Because a lot of people who, uh, a lot of business owners are, and, and lawyers, you know, who start their own law firms are high quick start. There's a, there's a personality test that's called the uh, Colby profile, which everyone on, on my team takes. Mike Mogill is actually huge on it. He's who I learned it from through Strategic Coach. Everyone needs to take Colby. And, and every time the entrepreneurs are like super high on quick start, which means they're great at taking risks. They're great at moving on to the next thing. But when you constantly are moving on to the next idea, sometimes you can abandon what's already working. I had a mentor once that said, you know, every time I find something that works, I immediately try to find a way to abandon it because you get bored with what's working. So what you're saying is laser focus on the things that are working in the very beginning stages and quadruple down on them. Is that correct? That, that's correct. Because I mean, let's, let's go back and think about it. America Online made millions and billions through direct mail. Groupon made a huge business off of an email list, right? So as long as it's something that you know is working, you understand how it works, you can go all in on it. I mean, that's one of the great things about pay-per-click is that if you do pay-per-click right, you can have a great return on your investment, you know, 10 to one, 20 to one return on a pay-per-click investment. Um, and so those are the types of things, if you know it, go for it. Just don't say, okay, I've got, I've squeezed 60% of value out of something. Now I'm going to move on to the next thing. Double down, focus on what really works, squeeze everything out of it before you move on to the next idea. That's a pretty big gem right there. How can people double down on something that's working without it costing more and more money? What are some ways in the beginning when you didn't have, well, I'm assuming you still don't have an unlimited budget. Nobody does. A bigger marketing budget, right? <laughs> I'm trying to find that magic pill, unlimited budget. How can people do this on more of a budget in the beginning so that when they, when they double down, it doesn't cost more and more and more and more and more? Well, it's a perfect example of some of the stuff that we're doing on social nowadays. You know, I've got probably about 45 different social advertising campaigns running on Facebook right now. How but many? we're literally spending... 45, I think, but we're literally wow. spending a dollar a day to build those brands. You know, over the course of the year, I'm going to spend $365 to build a brand in a certain core demographic and, and sort of get that to a point where it's starting to generate business. And uh, so that's, and what we're doing is we're seeing what's working. And when we see that certain people are getting results from their campaigns that we've worked on, we add more money. So I have one attorney that we started out at a dollar a day. Now she's up to $3 a day. So over the course of the year, she's going to spend about $1,000, but it's turning into three, four, five, ten 10 calls a week that uh, some of them she can take, some of them she refers out, but it's just building her brand name in a community that uh, was looking for a lawyer to reach out to them. Really what it is, is it's not about spending more money than the next person. It's, sending, it's about spending smart money compared to the next person. Mm, wow. Okay. Spending smart money. That's a very good takeaway. 
if you were to put yourself in, what, when did you start your firm? I started the firm in 2000. So let's put ourselves back then. Let's say you weren't working with your dad. How would you, how would you get a client? Okay, so you got to remember, I started my practice without my father. My father had a oh, partner. Okay. I left the public defender's office and hung a shingle without him as a partner and worked my practice for about a year and a half before he and his partner decided to go their separate ways and we were able to join up in September of 2001. We opened our doors on September 1st, 2001. You know, if I were to, to go back to how I was getting clients back then, it was obviously the strength of relationships. You know, I had bartended my way through law school. I had a lot of connections in the bartending industry. Uh, I was going out regularly at night, just allowing people to remember who I was uh, and, and sort of trying to stay top of mind with my core group of people who I knew would support me and push me out there. And the other thing I would do is I would just talk to lawyers and say, hey, you want to send me referrals? I'll, you know, I'll, I'm happy to take the cases you don't want because I knew there were lawyers that were 20, 30, 40 years older than me who didn't want those low level cases because it wasn't a high enough uh, dollar value for them with all of their institutional overhead and the like. But for me, as a young lawyer starting out with literally a rented desk for $500 a month uh, and a cell phone, I was able to take cases at a lower margin uh, and actually make decent money off them. Uh, and then I, obviously as I grew, you know, one thing you gotta remember too, I started taking credit cards on day one and back 20 plus years ago, a lot of lawyers especially in the criminal defense field, we're just waiting for people to come through the door with cash. By mm. being tech forward, which is amazing to say, being tech forward 20 years ago was credit cards. being able to take credit cards, but it, it certainly was. Being tech forward, I was able to jump on that. So things that you can do nowadays that are tech forward is allow people to schedule a call from you right off your website using a link, you know, like a Calendly link or a Qt link, one of those things, or um, uh, uh, really embracing SMS messaging for your follow-ups. We're actually transitioning away from all of our follow-up emails, uh, our drip emails to our existing client base, and translating them over into private unlisted YouTube videos so that we can shoot them uh, an SMS link to their YouTube video that can fill them in on what's going on because that's the way that the client wants to intake the information. They don't necessarily want to have to sit and read an email at night. So it's really adapting to what the clients want and being a first mover. Very interesting point there. And I remember you telling me that how you do customized videos for yeah. every single lead, right? Every single lead. Every single lead. Quick, you know, once my, once my sales attorney gets off the phone with them, my partner talks to them about what they're going to be expecting. Uh, she'll record a quick video and she'll send them out a text message that says, hey, I'm glad we were able to talk. I got on the phone. Just trying to make that personal connection through video. When people can see you and inter interact with you, they, they, they have a more uh, an affinity for you. I mean, that's the thing that blows me away. I still see lawyers who have these websites and they don't even have a picture of themselves on the website. At the end of the day, man, people connect with people. And if you don't have a picture on your website, in this day and age, it's like having an AOL or a, or a Hotmail email address. You know, just people are not going to respond because they have no idea who you are. Now, I just want to, I just want to drill into because one thing I've learned is that people's unique ability often is secondhand nature. It's it's you don't realize the genius in what you just said because it's your strength. Now, there's two things you said that literally from this video, I think could make any attorney watching this probably a million dollars over the next five years. Well, I hope so. That's what it's all about. Yes. Video and text. Absolutely. Right there. You just, you just said them really quick, right? I asked you about the video, but you said it very quick. You're sending a customized follow-up video for every lead and you're texting. Texting is the key. We get leads. We get, you know, I don't even know, maybe 200 leads we got last month from attorneys some from LinkedIn, some from Facebook, some from our Google ad campaign. And I text from my personal cell phone. Now, and I know it's not too very you know, scalable. I do it because I'm, I'm the one behind the videos and it's kind of like the, sure. the, the star effect, right? Like they've seen all my videos and then I text them. And it's like, whoa, and I really do text them. I'm trying to scale it because it's a little unscalable. But my response rate is we've calculated 800% higher than email. Because people, oh, you know, cool. lawyers, just inundated with email. So the step one that you said is get creative with relationships to generate 
your initial caseload, find arbitrage opportunities. You're talking about dollar a day Facebook campaigns, right? Get leads. Then you get leads. You have to differentiate yourself. And there is almost no competition for video and text in almost any industry. Because everyone right, says, oh, send an email, yeah. give a call. You know, it's funny, I was talking this weekend, I have, I have a couple of websites that uh, sort of just operate on their own and generate leads uh, that I ship out to other lawyers because it's not something that we're actively interested in doing anymore. At one point we had those part of practices uh, in our office and we've sort of niched down. Uh, you know, after expanding, we realized that there was no personal satisfaction in doing other areas of law. And so, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I, you know, I sort of had this mid-career crisis, not a midlife crisis, but a mid-career crisis where I said, well, I've sort of done everything I wanted to do in the criminal realm. Why don't I take on family law and personal injury law and open up these other areas? Uh, and what I found was I had no personal passion for the uh, practice areas. Uh, and it was only when I sort of re-niched back down into my heart and soul that I was able to uh, really find satisfaction every day coming into the office. Um, but one of the things that I think that you talked about that, that it's, really, it's really important uh, for people to do is, 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 is maintain those relationships uh, with people and, and really sort of let people know what your brand is and what you stand for. Uh, because I was talking to uh, one of the leads, I got a lead off that website this weekend. And so it was a case in New York. I called a, a buddy of mine who has been a lawyer for about 25 years in a personal injury practice. I sent him a quick test message. Hey, I got a lead for you. Uh, and his response was, so you want me to call them on the weekend? And I was just like, yeah, they're looking for a lawyer on the weekend. And they're like, okay, I, I guess I can do that. Uh, so five minutes later, they're on the phone call with, with the lead. Uh, turns out it's a viable case in a practice area that they know already really well. Um, they have the experts already in their, uh, in their uh, systems. Uh, and so they said, you know, hey, I, I probably would have waited until Monday to give this person a call. And I said, you know, the modern consumer is looking for instant results. They're looking to sort of end their inquiry so that you can move on to other things. And that's the great thing about SMS messaging is that the open rates are like 90% within a minute because it's instantaneous. Uh, and so by showing that you're attentive to them, with SMS, you're able to sort of move your practice and differentiate it from other people. So, and here's another brilliant uh, thing you just said, weekend calls. Um, it's so funny. I quadruple, I do bid adjustments on weekends for, for our campaigns because all, all of my competition, all the agencies, unless there's like a handful that will take calls on weekends, it's, it's insane. Yesterday, I had six scheduled and attended one hour calls with attorney leads on a Saturday. Uh, it makes perfect sense because attorneys are busy during the week. Why am I gonna try and fit them into Monday at 3 p.m. time slot? They're swamped. Like, why would I do that? I had, I had 100% appointment stick rate. I just tested this out. I did them all on Saturday. And, and that's another differentiator. Weekend and night attendance to leads. Oh, uh, so video, text. Half our intake. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days a week. We've hired, uh, we've hired specifically to be able to have legit in the office intake people uh, that work with us every day. Uh, we're not outsourcing it to an answering service, although there are great answering services for lawyers out there, and it's certainly the first step in, in getting to that point before you can hire that weekend staff because they are a little more expensive um, and uh, the resources need to be there for that. Yeah, we have, we have fully staffed intake seven days a week, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Because we found, you know, by able to get a phone call from somebody and talk to them on Saturday night, we had a, a police officer was arrested here in Connecticut uh, over the weekend, uh, has a court date this morning, uh, hired us on Sunday because couldn't get any other lawyers. They, you know, called five lawyers uh, and my intake guy, Joe, picked up, talked to him, said, let me get you to a lawyer right away. Retained on the spot. Now we have an attorney appearing with him this morning in court uh, to defend a very, very weak case, uh, I might add. Um, but, you know, he, was, he had an immediate need to be filled, and we filled it. Uh, because we were available and other lawyers weren't, we got the case. Hmm. 
So after, let me, yeah, one tip. let me give you one tip before we, we get there. If you're, if you're, if you don't want to give out your cell phone number, but you still want to be able to text message with clients, get yourself a Google voice number, add it to your phone uh, and have that second number that becomes your work cell phone. Uh, and you can text on that. So maybe you don't give everybody your actual personal cell phone number, but you can give them a, a, a work cell phone number through Google voice for $10 a month. Uh, and then that solves that problem. You got me taking notes. I got a pen right here. Um, I just wrote that down. So the next step, so, so you, you get creative to get your initial caseload, right? Then you start differentiating yourself so that when you do get reached out to, you have a really high close rate, right? Then yep. the, next, the next step at, from that point when you have some revenue, it obviously becomes get more leads. So what would be your suggestion for the next step? Would it be Facebook? Would it be Google ads, SEO, all of the above uh, on a limited budget to get to that next step? Well, I think if it's criminal law, I think definitely you want to st your next step should be pay-per-click. Um, and I know it's something that you do. It's something that I'm doing. I ran my first pay-per-click ad November 2002. Uh, it, the term DUI lawyer cost me three cents for the click. Um, I think my DUI lawyer click last week was about $178 for a single click. So I've been riding the pay-per-click train for a long time. And I think that one of the reasons why pay-per-click is so valuable in these situations is that you're getting leads that are looking for to fill a need right now. Um, it's not something where you need to necessarily work on a, building a brand for six, 12, 18, 24 months. It's somebody who says, you know, I have a problem I need to solve in the next week. Uh, and so they're going and they're typing in specific keywords that you can find. Uh, and there's uh, plenty of opportunity there because the human mind is amazing in how they phrase things. Uh, and so there's plenty of opportunity for low cost pay-per-click terms, you know, you get the right key phrase that can convert at a high rate, uh, you can make a lot of money off of a very small investment. But pay-per-click is certainly the next step because pay-per-click leads tend to be hot leads uh, and they're, they're looking to purchase uh, legal services right away in whatever forum that you're in. If it's trust in the states, they're Googling trust in the states, it's something they've been thinking about for a while and they're finally deciding to take action. Um, you know, so. If they're, if they're looking for a divorce lawyer, it may be that the conversation has started uh, in, uh, in their relationship, or maybe they've been served. Uh, if they've been served with divorce proceedings, uh, then they need a lawyer right now. So you want to focus on those things. Um, and then obviously, content marketing is a great way because once they get, get to your site, you want to provide them with enough information so that they know what they're uh, going for uh, and, and they can digest all that information. And some people, you know, lawyers traditionally have not given away a lot of information, but I find the more information you can give the client, the more they, they recognize that you are the knowledgeable person and they want to hire you. Mm. So let's, let's keep this trajectory going. So, so next step you'd say is PPC, a little bit of content marketing, just to clarify for everyone, content marketing is putting out content to label yourself as not only a thought leader, but also to rank for specific strategic keywords within that content. So if you're a DUI lawyer, you put out a blog post on, you know, DUI laws, Connecticut, or something general like that, where you could just, you know, put everything, you know, some people like to do video first and have that transcripted into, into a blog. Content marketing is just putting out your knowledge in a packaged, organized format, and then making that readable by the search engine. So then we have a PPC campaign. We have, we start our content marketing. Yeah. And, and what I would do at this point is really start focusing on building your brand so that you are, uh, you know, you're in the conversation. I'm sure Bill, you, you could talk about how branded terms uh, convert the highest in pay-per-click. Uh, branded terms also have some of the lowest per bid cost. Um, but people, what you want to do is build a brand that people are seeking out. Uh, and so that as you start to develop your own knowledge and experience in, a, in an area and people start to know who you are and start, start seeking you out, you should invest some money, maybe 10% of your marketing budget in building your brand so that that brand starts to take a life of its own. You know, the mm -hmm. brand is what other people think about you. So, you know, and, and, and people are like, oh, should I really invest my money in my brand? Uh, is it worth spending money on that? You got to recognize that we are lawyers that by nature have a 20, 30, 40, 50 year career. So, you know, building your brand in your twenties can serve you when you're in your forties and in your sixties, because you are known for certain things. 
Uh, and so investing even a small amount of money in your brand will pr prove dividends for years to come. And one of the great things you can do is build your brand on social, uh, which is where I found something to be passionate about. Yep. And, and just to, uh, to, to, to uh, double down on that point, uh, your social practices for your firm were working so well that uh, you literally spun off your own marketing agency, FirmFlex, and now you are literally packaged what you did to build your brand on social. And now you're offering that to lawyers all over the United States in multiple practice areas. And I got to hear you speak and you had some amazing points and, and all of it was so accurate. You know, just even, you know, you, you said something very funny is uh, I, I took it in my notes. Um, you said something along the lines of people are much more interested in, uh, you know, uh, you know, cat videos than they are your knowledge of the law. So while it is important, you know, with content marketing for SEO reasons to start ranking for, for keywords on the law topics that, you know, it's, it's more important from social to like, you know, show a picture of the fact that you stubbed your toe or did some weird, funny thing. Cause you get way more engagement from that. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, I mean, like it goes back to my, my original message, people connect with people. Right. Uh, and, <laughs> You know, for the most part, lawyers um, are fungible in, in, in terms of the general public. You know, I have a law license, so people could think that I could handle a medical malpractice case or a bankruptcy case because, hey, he went to law school and he's licensed. Well, it's true. I could theoretically do that. It's not my skill set, right? So what I've done is build a brand around my skill set that humanizes me and allows people to connect with me because look, picking up the phone and calling a lawyer is intimidating. It means that you have a problem you can't solve on your own, that you have to bring in professional help to solve. And that alone is scary. Uh, and so by building a brand that humanizes me, humanizes the lawyers in my office, it allows people to lower those barriers to make that phone call and have us connect with them. Uh, and so we want to put ourselves out there as members of our community, people can reach out to us, ask us questions. Last night, 10.30 at night, I'm getting a text message from a, another Little League baseball coach who knows that I'm a lawyer through some of my local branding and says, hey, I saw your cell phone number on the list. I hope this isn't inappropriate, but I've got an issue with my father-in-law. We're worried about his mental state because he's in the, starting to progress into dementia. We need to know what the right thing to do is. And you're the only lawyer that I feel I could reach out to. So I said, hey, look, I don't do this type of law, but this is the lawyer to call. Uh, and so it's Monday, 1030 in the morning. I got an email from that guy who messaged me last night, 12 hours ago, uh, to get a referral. And I've already got an email, thank you, from the lawyer who said, I just got a call at 9 a.m. from this guy. Thank you for the referral. So all I did was just be myself. I was a giving person. I put it out there that I can help you with your questions and I'm not getting anything from it, uh, but I'm just connecting to people in my community and that's building my brand as the approachable lawyer. So if you guys want to learn more about, you know, what's in Jay's brain, um, leave a comment <laughs> below. <laughs> Leave a comment below because we'd love to go into a, a deeper uh, topic. I know, you know, a lot of attorneys who listen to us are, are all varying sizes of, of law firms. Um, so if there's any specific thing that we didn't go in depth uh, enough about, comment below about that and we could put out a different, uh, more specific video on that topic. Perhaps, you know, how to go from five to 10 attorneys, how to find good attorneys, um, things like that. And, and we'd love to help you with that. I did have one question that was lingering before we sign off here. It's lead aggregators and directories. I didn't hear you talk about that, but yet I get so many calls from the people in the criminal law niches in PI, like, can I just buy leads? And it seems it, it, you didn't bring that up not once in your whole trajectory of growth. Yeah, because I just don't see there's necessarily value in them anymore. If you go back 20 plus years ago, those lead aggregators and those, those directories did serve a purpose because the majority of people on the web, really it was, it was a brand new world and they had no idea how to find reliable information. There was a lot of misinformation or disinformation out there. Um, but those directories, and they still exist and they rank really well just because the, the sheer size of them. Um, but the reality is, is that the, the, 
legal consumer today knows that if they need a trust and estates lawyer or a divorce lawyer or a criminal lawyer, someone who deals with people on a regular basis, they know how to go to a search engine and type in the keywords that they're looking for. And they recognize that there are ads and there, and, and there are directories. And then there's the local guy or girl who actually does this type of law, right? Uh, and so they're spending more and more time on the local people in their community, or at least the people who they see as local who can solve their problem, and they're skipping over those directories. Now, there's always going to be a role for directories um, in, in the legal world, but if you're relying on them to provide all of your data, what happens when there's another algorithmic shakeup, and all of a sudden, all those directories because they're not local to uh, you know, to the service area that you're working in, are gone, and you're left saying, "Where did all my leads go?" Uh, you know, the most important thing you can do is is generate your own leads, because when you generate your own leads, then you control your own destiny. What I, I couldn't have thought of a better way to end this on uh, control your destiny, and and the point you just made about data. Oh my gosh, that is a game changer. Right. I mean, if you just, oh, uh, you know, I need, I need uh, leads. Let me just throw money at the problem. Right. I, I don't care about anything else. Well, even if the cost per lead is higher, the data you collect and own, own exactly. is way, it, the, the value of owning the data should, it, it doesn't matter that the cost per lead is higher because the value of owning the data is 10 times more than the immediate lead for decision making purposes. So, absolutely, absolutely. Wow. That data is going to be able to serve you long, long into the future. So thank you so much, Jay. I hope you guys found this video valuable. If you guys are interested in working with Jay, he has some low entry point social media management programs. He has some very robust, disruptive social media packages. Just go to getfirmflex.com and submit your information there to learn more about Jay's social media agency for lawyers. It's really changing the game right now. And the systems he's set up to really deliver consistency is unbelievable and, and impressive. He showed me some of his systems on how he does it. And it is really breathtaking what he's built. Do that if you guys are looking into your social strategy. If you guys are interested in getting a free PPC audit, or quote from SMB team, go to smbteam.com, submit your information, we'd love to help you there. Also, get on our email drip, where we send you law firm marketing advice every day to your inbox for free, just put your email in at smbteam.com. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, Bill, take it easy.